Hello and welcome to our panel discussion for Conscious Aging. We are in season six of Conscious Aging of the series, which actually Mark, my co-founder, I would say, but also husband and dead husband, unfortunately, has created for himself because he was so excited to realize that he might have lived other 30 years maybe like his mother who was 100 when she died. And so we created the series. I think many of you might have already seen some of the previous episodes in, in one of them. We had already Anne Roberts two years ago and even a few weeks ago. So our guests are, as I said already, Anne Roberts, Firehawk, Monia, Monia Frühwirt and me, Heidi Hörnlein from the wisdomfactory.net. So we want to explore what is conscious aging for us, ourselves. Mm -hmm. What do we think it should be <laughs> if we reached it, or if we didn't, or if we are still working on it. And also how we might help others to deal with aging because that's a fact or we die before or we get older and age and so we need to find a way to handle it. So before we talk about the topic I would invite you to introduce yourself everyone and then we go and yeah keep uh, the, uh, the microphone muted while you are not speaking. Do you have a preferred order, Heidi? Shall I begin? Yes, do. All right. Well, first of all, I'm Firehawk, and uh, it's a joy, as is often in my life, to be a man among women. So uh, that happens quite a bit. Um, I was born and raised in England <clears throat> from a, an American father and an English mother. And I lived there till I was 18 and I came to the US and I've been here ever since. Um, uh, I think my life and work took a great turn about 27 years ago when I met a mixed blood a Native American couple who were keepers of an old body of earth teachings. And they offered uh, and my wife and I accepted to uh, share that knowledge uh, with them as their students and actually formal apprentices. So, um, so for about eight and a half, almost nine years, we, uh, we created ceremonies all over the world with them, um, the different seasonal times and trainings and explorations and all, all that good stuff. And then the only thing they asked of us was that we give it back in our own way. And so since the year 2000, that's what we've been doing. And I met uh, Anne Roberts along the way in 1996. And we've been uh, friends um, through time and recently um, friends and colleagues and co-workers. And we've just launched um, yesterday uh, a 12 week inquiry into um, our elderhood uh, called Active Wisdom. And we'll speak more about that. But um, my work is really about gathering the people together in a way that we can be more fully human with each other, that we can take the time to see and listen and be with each other in ways that are generative, which has quite a bit to do with conscious aging. So that's my introduction. Thank you. Thank you. Who comes next? So shy, Monia, you normally are not so shy. Come on. Oh, I just wanted Anne to introduce herself, but it's no, it doesn't matter to me. I'm Monia Frivet. I live in Vienna, where I was born 78 years ago. And in the 70s, we were lucky enough to come to the United States because my husband was positioned there. And I started with Kundalini Yoga at that time and was not really interested in the diplomatic service anymore. And I have two 
daughters and three grandchildren and have been married to my husband for 54 years. Uh, I also have people who go with me on a ritual expedition and um, some of them more than 30 years also so I'm not alone and I became interested in Garo Transcendence a couple of years ago and now we are working together to present to the integral community in Vienna which I have been guiding for a couple of 15 years I believe we are willing to uh, share our expedition into Swedish Nordic ideology, uh, Hansi Freinacht and uh, Listening Society is his first book. Uh, both of them in English and many here don't really, are not really fluent in English. So we are going to present this in October. And I find that Garrett Sendence is just, he, this is also a Swedish author. And so it's maybe in the Nordic countries that they come closer to where we want to be. That's so far my introduction. Oh, oh so many overlapping interests and circles is from your words, Monai. Um, Gosh, where to start? So in 1996, I met Firehawk and his wife, Pelly in Scotland when they came on an outreach strategy with these, this body of teachings. And I just felt I had come home and uh, decided to step into training. So I've been in training with this body of teachings ever since. And I had a management consultancy practice at the time and developed programs where we were weaving these ancient earth wisdom traditions with leading edge uh, modern science and management science. Had great fun with that and took that into big organizations that, that sometimes thought I was from planet Zog, but actually <laughs> it made quite a difference. And I was teaching leadership. I've taught using these tools to chief constables, to managing directors of large corporations, and it works and that's where my passion for consciousness started to come really forward. Um, I love Ken Wilber's work so I've studied Integral a lot. Um, a very good friend Tom Christensen who unfortunately has passed I believe. Um, I got into sort of productive relationship with him around spiral dynamics and he developed a coaching model with me which was just amazing and really helped me to go back through my life stage by stage and look at how I developed on the spiral. And that has guided my understanding ever since. And where am I now on the spiral in this time of being 68? I love The Listening Society. So Tom introduced me to that book. And another one as well that I sourced for him that he couldn't get in the States now, remember. Um, and I just love how it digs you in the ribs. You know, it really challenges you to uh, not take for granted. I'd love to, him to take a real good look at Brexit. I'm sure that would uh, be interesting. I love the Daily Evolver. I find that helps as well to uh, really help me understand culturally what's going on. And my final piece is Elderhood. Uh, Firehawk and I have had this co-creative dream to bring together people of the baby boomer generation into ways individually and collectively to identify this time in our lives and how we can, in community, explore this and find ways to do good in the world. I've spoken. Thank you very much. So what else can I do? Uh, can I say about myself? Also, I'm sort of a host, but <laughs> I still can say something. Yeah, as I said, for a long time, it was not so much my topic, uh, aging. Consciousness, yes, quite a bit. 
And uh, I went into reading Ken Wilber's books more than 20 years ago, and I got fascinated, and then also Spiral Dynamics. And uh, yeah, the development, it, uh, it really fascinated me, me to, to see where I was, where I am, where I still have these bits of the different stages. And yeah, and now I realize that I'm getting older too. So I decided... <laughs> <laughs> to go on with the series and hope to find people to to continue with me on this journey and yeah for me it was always how do you say uh, strange that we are getting older and nobody prepares us for that we are prepared for university no for school and everything and maybe also for getting into into um, the work life, you get all sorts of uh, help. But then falling out of work life, I mean, I never did this sort of work life, but anyway, uh, we, we, uh, we, we are just, it's like, like, like marrying somebody or getting children is ex expected that you know how to do that. <laughs> and so it is with aging. And I thought when we talk about it, maybe we find people who are interested in that because they have the same ideas or quests and might not be able to ask anybody. And so when we do these conversations publicly, they might find them and they might find some, some ideas, some inspiration and some answers. And that's what's behind what, what I'm doing also with the whole Wisdom Factory. Okay, so let's go in conscious aging. I think I, a little bit I already said because aging we do all, but how do we age consciously? What is your idea or how did you see it in your own life? When did consciousness about aging arrive and how did you handle that? Go on, Firehawk. <laughs> go for it. All right. Um, I think the conscious part of it is what um, what I didn't understand much about until I was in my mid forties. You know, I was a um, I was a theater major in university. I, I, um, I had my own audiovisual production business, which I called industrial rock and roll, because we used to travel around big shows and have bagpipes and kinds of people arrive on these hotels, luxury hotels. And, you know, and, and I, I was pretty happy to kind of go along with my life as it was unfolding. I had two children. Um, I had two divorces, you know, so I was just in this journey. And I think the shock to me was when a friend asked me the question, what would a tenfold improvement in the lasting difference that you make in the world look like? And I had never thought about myself as making a lasting difference in the world. It just didn't, it had never occurred to me. And then on the heels of that, within a couple of years, um, I met my teachers. And the whole journey with Earth Wisdom was about um, learning about myself, uh, learning about relationship. I, I went through the first relationship teachings with them and I would go, oh no, <laughs> I, you know, I wish I'd known that, <laughs> but, but as you say, who was preparing us for consciousness? And so, you know, the deep dive for those years into consciousness uh, opened me to myself, but it also opened me to the possibility of relationship and relatedness, not just with humans, but relationship with earth and all of the creatures and the wonder of our earth system. And, um, and it changed, it changed my life. And so, you know, 20 some years later, almost 30, pretty soon to be 30 years uh, on, um, 
I can look back and see cycles of my learning, you know, the wonder of finding consciousness. You know, it's like when you discover it, it's like, oh boy, this is a, this is a playground I can live in forever. And I, I had that feeling right away. Um, and then, you know, the rigorous training that I went through, the, the years and years and years of holding sacred space uh, with and for other people, and then a couple of years ago, when Anne and I were talking, it became clear to both of us that we were entering into a new phase. And I'll, I'll let her speak more about that um, aspect of it. But what I'm finding is a resonance in two areas that is very strong for me. One is discovering, understanding, and amplifying my own elderhood. What am I here to do? What is it that's mine to do now at 71 you know, with uh, six children, 10 grandchildren? You know, there's just this whole part of my life that's very different than it was 27 years ago. But the other part is um, how do we reconnect our elderhood with the generations that are coming behind us, you know, with particularly the, the millennials, the younger generation, because there's an archetypal wisdom that youth and elders are important for the wholeness of society. And that's not been, certainly not in the US, that's not our way. It's, you know, I think, I think some societies still hold that very dear and still have those structures, but I didn't grow up in those structures. And most of the people that I know didn't. And so we've started to open up this territory of elderhood, not only for others that want to study that for a while, but also as a way to open the door for being with uh, youngers in a way that's productive and healthy and not saying, you know, wow, well, we did it all and you, you just got to suck it up, you know, I mean, all of those things, or, you know, let me tell you about the wisdom of, the, you know, it's like, that's not what happens. What happens when elders and youth are together is they feed each other, they nourish each other, they, they challenge each other. And um, that's healthy. You know, it's really a healthy place. So that's, that's enough for now. But that's, that's what I would say. Shall I pick up and run with that? Yeah. So my journey since 1996 has been around uh, understanding how the indigenous culture saw consciousness. And the, the wonderful thing about the body of teachings we stepped into is the lineage is not broken. You know, in the UK, the Celtic indigenous cultures in a sense are not quite as detailed there's some there but this was a body of teachings that was alive and could be tracked back and we went back to the original Mayan temples and you know ha had that experience to know where these uh, people who crafted this body of teachings over thousands of years their consciousness was in very strong contemplative relationship with nature and so since 96, I've journeyed in that personal development journey around consciousness. And it's, it keeps opening up my capacity to understand, to perceive, you know, just in this spiral development, you know, you, you can handle more complexity. Uh, and yet there's this lovely phrase, simplicity on the other side of complexity that always danced with me. But, um, and that as you progress, for a period of time you're had by where you're moving to and it's a bit uncomfortable and then you get it and that was one of the things Tom really taught me was how to know what it's like to be had by a new stage of development which is uncomfortable and then how to settle into having it and at this point in my life uh, a very profound influence has come from a woman called Jude Curvin who's written a book called The Cosmic Hologram and she basically is a scientist who is proving and bringing all the scientific evidence into a, a way that shows that consciousness creates matter. 
it's not the other way around. And that's been just a, oh, and she's doing it as a cosmologist. Um, she's studied indigenous cultures and she's bringing it forward in a way that I think, wow, this is, this is my learning edge now. And the information is at the center of creation, she's saying, and consciousness. And I have to say it's at my edge, comprehension wise. There's time times I read the book and I go, huh? I, and and I, I, I could read it a few times and I still don't get it, but I know it's important. And so that brings me to aging. And what I've realized in my research, and I, I went back to uni in, when I retired and I've learned to be a social researcher. But what I find is there's a lot of research around aging of loss of prowess, you know, dementia, um, the frailty with aging and I don't know if you said geotranscendence I wasn't sure if I heard the word correctly but certainly in Ericsson's model that's the stage of very old age when we pull our consciousness back ready to move to die to move to the next round as we say um, but what I'm really interested in is that ground between leaving work and very old age, which could for us be 25 to 30 years, where we can retain our prowess. We can come to terms with aging, but we can move out into life um, doing things that we're passionate about and that make a difference and that keep us alive and vigorous in our lives. And so conscious aging has that dance of this whole awareness piece and the deliberateness and the commitment to making the most of it. I've spoken. Uh, the term is Gero transcendent, G-E-R-O transcendent. And yeah, to me, a consciousness is what mattered most of my life and finding Ken Wilber's maps in 2000, because before that he was just developing himself. Um, yeah, that helped me a lot after going through all the new age diverges. And to... You mentioned when did you, or you asked Heidi, when did we first become aware of old, of aging? Um, my grandchildren, I had my grandchildren rather early, comparatively early. And all of a sudden I noticed, well, I'm not a grandmother, I am the oldest. And uh, whenever we are, we're in the company of other people, Mostly we were also the oldest, my husband and I. And everybody knew that I was into some very unusual things like building a samadhi tank where you can float and get into meditation. This is my stupa for mankind. And, uh, or uh, creating uh, places where people can meet and talk about consciousness and Ken Wilber. So uh, I was sort of respected for being different, not being the typical grandmother, not being interested in feeding everybody, which I still do, but still it's not that important. And uh, trying to be an authentic person. And it's amazing how easily the smaller children uh, take to that. They always knew they could rely on me and they live close by. So I saw them growing up, now they are 22 and 23. Uh, and that was a great joy. And my husband, when my husband retired, he, for the first time, saw how children develop because his own daughters, he was busy in his job at that time and 
the usual thing, nothing, nothing unusual. And he, I, I was amazed how he enjoyed being with his small grandchum and rubbing his tummy because he had colics. And so it was just uh, very moving for me to see that men, if given a chance, would be very, very uh, concerned about everybody else. But usually we ask from them different things. So uh, I don't know whether you heard about the book by one of the integrals in, in Germany, um, How to Be a Real Man. Uh, I don't know whether it's translated into English yet, but uh, so to have your feminine side also develop as a man. Uh, this way one, and to have my masculine side also develop as a woman in old, in old age. Uh, is to me very important. And I was wondering about consciousness creating matter. Well, consciousness is creating reality. So uh, whatever you really set your mind to, uh, I was called a creator. What, if I miss something that isn't there, I create it. So uh, I'm a city person, so I don't, we don't have, but we do have sacred places in the city as well but it's probably different when you are in the countryside and when you travel with people who have a lineage there uh, i'm wondering uh, how Anne or firehawk how uh, how do you get these two rather different uh, approaches to life together. I mean, being in the 21st century, uh, how, what language do you use to uh, present this to mainstream people? Or do you just talk to insiders? I have spoken, you said. <laughs> That's very nice. It's an old, old way of saying you're complete and then the, the tradition says ho, which simply means your words have been heard. And it's a, it, you know, it sounds so simple, but it's a profound mark of respect. How you spell I, it? Ho? H-O. H-O. H -O. H -O. Mm -hmm. Ho. ho. Mm -hmm. I've, I've heard you. I've heard you. Yeah, I've heard you. Very nice. You want to take it, Anne? Yeah. So um, I had a bit of a dance when I was in the world of business and I didn't fully declare it, but it was part of my consciousness. So if I was taking a brief from a senior manager about something, I had this map in, in a sense, I used to have it behind my head in my own consciousness, this awareness. It's the medicine wheel if you, if you know about the eight directions. And it gives you a holistic whole view of life. So I could see what I was getting from the conversation and I could see what was missing. And so that would guide me to questions. And they would say, what made you ask that question? you know and then you was and i wouldn't necessarily tell them it's just what came to me so um when i retired i made a conscious choice that i wouldn't hide my not hide but you know i would be completely explicit about my relationship with this body of teachings and this is who i am and this is what i bring forward it guides your language in one way but I've never found that it gets in the way because if you're intricately aware, you're also looking at the person you're with. And my training in integral was to speak to the listening of the other and to be sensitive to the, the listening of the other. Um, in one, I've trained with the Conscious Business Academy, Brett Thomas, uh, many moons ago. And he talked about simulcasting. And so if you were simulcasting, you'd speak to different levels all at the same time. 
And I thought that was quite, quite neat. And in integral speak, you can get lost in language too, um, if you're not careful. So I'll stop there for now. I've spoken. <laughs> oh, I think, uh, Monia, what I would add, um, just from a slightly different uh, trajectory, is that um, about eight years ago, um, a dear friend and I um, asked a question. And the question was, what if we held this digital realm, this space where we can see and hear each other, where we can share movies and pictures and we can have breakout groups and, you know, a thousand people can gather together and, you know, four of us can have a panel discussion across geographies and time zones. Uh, what if we held that space, that digital realm, as we called it, as sacred, as every bit as sacred as the earth, every bit, that all of this comes from earth. I mean, nothing that we experience in our daily lives, in the material part of them, comes from any place else. <laughs> you know, we certainly can have cosmic experience with all of the wonders of the cosmos, but the grounded, on the ground physicality is earth generated. And um, most of the structures that we humans create are partial and conditional and in many ways incomplete. And yet the planet that we live on has been creating structure continuously for over 4 billion years that are whole and complete and from my perspective, wildly beautiful, just you know, amazing to be in this place with this living being that's still, uh, still evolving. So the 21st century piece is to say, it's not an either or, it's not, well, we can have the earth ceremonies and they're wonderful and sacred and boy, it's a different realm, absolutely true. But what about the, the ones who won't come to that kind of experience with that kind of context around it? Is there a way for us to touch the sacred today with each other, the four of us? Can we, can we share our hearts in a way that um, not only feeds each one of us, but because of who each one of us are, we're creating something that's different. Um, you know, there's another, there's another one of us here. <laughs> That's all of us. It's the we of who we are. So for me, it's this how to dance with the 21st century in a way that honors the ancient ones. And at the same time, um, not shy away from the, the technological aspects when we can ground it in, in the sacred. So... That's my bit of that. Oh. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> you want, Tamania? Yeah, uh, because uh, we have in our integral community, we have been talking about what language we use for what meme, value meme, and the difficulties that arise. And as Heidi has been creating this virtual space, this we space for women so far, uh, and it's a very nurturing and beautiful space. And it's also, it also uses the listening to the other and letting it sink in. So uh, the Hansi Nachtwey book with the title, The Listening Society, was just, yeah, exactly what I needed at that moment and what I need at the moment. And I agree with you fully that God, the planet, and I have experienced it as being of one consciousness in many different facets, one living consciousness. And of course I had shamanic periods too, I have to admit that, but <laughs> now I'm trying to, <laughs> now I'm trying to convey uh, an urban language 
because this is the most of the people I am in contact with. And I am also terribly sorry about Christians that he has died so unexpectedly. It really hurt me deeply. Yeah. Um, what, I, what I was driving at is uh, what language to use to communicate uh, in a we space uh, and to convey to people how this may differ from the language we use in everyday communication. I have spoken. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> I want to, to go a little bit back. What if a technology that what we are doing is sort of a intermediate form of or a sort of a technological form of telepathy, which in a certain way, uh, in a certain, in the, in the original people, they still had this possibility and then we lost it. And what if this is a sort of a reminder, a pre-stage of rediscovering our uh, capacity with that. And I want to come back to Anne, what you said about the, Consciousness is first and creates matter. I, Monia knows it already. I have heard the audio book from Erwin Laszlo about uh, the theory of everything and the Akashic fields. And it made so much sense to me. So, you know, I'm in the period now of, of allowing ever more um, these thoughts to enter into my life. Even if maybe other people might say, oh, she's getting old and she's becoming a little bit more weird, you know, but I don't mind because I need for me that things make sense. I cannot just believe it. And uh, I haven't read the book you are talking about, Anne, but, um, and not even the one, uh, um, the listening society, but with what I have read by a very a person which you can take very seriously, uh, makes me, my scientific bias, you know, uh, makes me, uh, allows me to open more my mind and, and take into consideration that maybe we have to put everything upside down as we thought so far. And this is exciting, you know, and it feels that maybe this is the part of our age of our um, lives where we can come to these uh, new insights when while you are still working and doing and doing you don't have even time to think about that the previous worldview might not have been too correct or something like this so i just want to throw it in that maybe this is the reason why we have this extra time that we can discover more let's say, truth or more reality or how we want to name it? Uh, the piece about language is so, so important. You know, it's easy to alienate our listening with the words that we use and how do we find that resonance with each other. And... Um, that's, you know, that's a lifelong study <laughs> understanding and I don't, I don't claim to be expert. But what I've learned in this space is that this kind of conversation, you know, is tremendously more nourishing than if each of us brought our PowerPoint presentations and we showed the, the matter of it and we had it all laid out and we had all these things. There's something alive here. Uh, between us and in us that is um, that allows us to listen it allows that I think of us when we're in this when I'm in this space I think of myself as having elephant ears you know they're they're just these very large ears that can listen to what's coming without saying oh no 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 or oh let me you know it's like there's space here and um, I think I think we are finding our way to a different kind of we space. And I think 
the process of aging, eldering, and a, and a time in our lives that we might call elderhood um, has huge promise for, it, it's pretty hard to deny that the, the world as we know it is transforming at an increasingly rapid pace. There's a lot that what we, the things that we counted on no longer seem to be substantial. They no longer seem to have sway. And there's so much noise that it's really hard to hear the signal. And for me, conversations like this help me hear the signal. Is what you say, I had not thought of. You know, each one of us is bringing something to the other three, and and that's that's a gift. That's a real gift. So. Oh, I hear you. <laughs> I've spoken. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly what Monia was uh, alluding to, the, the group of women I uh, have created. Actually, she had created it when there was no uh, technology yet. But it's exactly what we try to explore, a different way to be together. And I call it the co-creation, because there is no need that I say, no, you are wrong. And I have to fight against you. But what we share is sort of putting pieces of the puzzle together. And this may open my mind, your mind. And I find it so exciting. I could do it every day <laughs> with people too. You know, it's, yeah, you, you see me. I'm excited. Thank you that you are here. <laughs> So maybe, thank you, I, I could pick up and, and move a slightly into the ageing aspect of our conversation. And um, in 2016, and I said this on the call we did together, uh, Heidi, um, I was in a place of discomfort having left the world of work and finding my path and came across the work of Mary Catherine Bateson. And the stage that she says in Ericsson's model of act of wisdom between generativity, the time of work and parenting and that productivity time of our lives and what used to be retirement and old age and getting ready to die. And when I brought this to Firehawk, we, we wanted to say, how does this, we have this wonderful co-creative conversations that go all over the place, but, and because we work in wheels, we decided that we wanted an act of wisdom wheel and we identified four aspects of aging, of elderhood, um, of act of wisdom that we wanted to look into. The first was my well-being, how I'm really looking at my life, looking at my wellness and looking at all aspects and taking care of myself as this capacity and capability to care for others. Then, Firehawk, we go to the south. Do you want to riff off it rather than me do it all? Sure. So we'll go back and forth. <clears throat> uh, one, one thing I'd say about my well-being, there's something underneath that for me that's about uh, the healing of old traumas. You know, we all carry our own traumas from wherever we lived, how we've lived. But we're also carrying collective traumas that go way back, you know, and also are part of our awareness and our consciousness. So then the place for me of development, my development, which is what's in the south, of, so the, the, my well-being is in the west of this circle. And then in the south, my development really is about the kind of learning and growing that regenerates uh, not only the self, but everything it touches. And, and that's, you know, I mean, at sort of the earth level, that's how I experience the earth, is when I give myself time and space to listen with her, I feel incredibly rejuvenated. I feel like I, and I get visions and understandings that inform my work. So my development then is... Um, and I think the, the first gift my teachers gave me was that I knew I was going to be studying these medicine wheels and concepts for the rest of my life. I absolutely knew it in my bones. There wasn't any question about it. 
and um, and I'm living into that dream. So then in the north, can, can I can I go into my development just before you go there? Sure. Um, one is I'm reading a book at the moment by Stephen Jenkinson uh, called Come to Age, which is about elderhood. And in the introduction, is it Charles Einstein? I'm not quite sure. If he... It's it's Eisenstein. Eisenstein, right? Now. And he talks about stories, and he says that we're living in the space between two stories at this time. And for me, my development is to be that wise elder who understands that, who can hold what has gone before and hold an appreciation and respect for it and see what's coming. And for my development to always be at that edge. That's nice, thank you. You want to talk about the north of this wheel? No, you go. <laughs> <laughs> so the north is, um, the words are my vocation. And, and one of the, the wonderful beings that's no longer on this earth plane, Barbara Marks Hubbard. And when I met her many years ago, a gathering of business people in San Francisco, she spoke to them of vocational arousal. And it just, the whole room descended into great gales of laughter and appreciation. But she was very serious about the time, you know, she spoke about, um, you know, sex being for procreation, but what she called suprasex was for co-creation. And so this place of meaningful manifestation in the world, meaningful action in the world, which I love about active wisdom, is really not only best, but I think deeply only possible with others. It, it's, not an, it's not a withdrawal into aging and a, and a stepping back. It's going places you've never been before and being willing to you know, build bridges, cross bridges, and, uh, and, and have things happen. But what I'm finding in myself is I've gone from that pushing place of adulthood, you know, where I've, I've got my agenda and I've got my, and I want to create, and I've been a very creative being, to this, this listening, opening, but still manifesting, still bringing things forward, uh, but with more spaciousness, more openness, and, and more, more desire to co-create. That, that's a very strong place. So that's the North. Why don't you talk about the East? Yeah, in the North, um, when I, I did a year long with Barbara Marks Hubbard just before she passed, and she got us to write our deepest heart's desire. And I thought I was pretty clued in, you know, but actually when I really took the time to say, what is my deepest heart's desire? And I crafted it and I shared it with the groups. I can really feel that I'm living now with the launch of the program last night and the 20 people who joined us, that I'm living that evolutionary purpose. And when Firehawk and I were um, crafting the Center for Timeless Earth Wisdom, we followed the guidance of Simon Sinek's work around Start With Why. Why are we doing this? And that's what I think the North is. You get the most profound heartfelt why that then allows you to manifest. So I'll move to the East. I'm free of that. So, and finally on our Wheel of Active Wisdom is my freedom. Now, typically we would, in some of the wheels we have, we'd start in the East where the sun rises but that felt like the completing place for us because now it's to let the spirit soar in the freedom that you have at this stage in your life to adventure, to take on new study, to take on new crafts, to do what you were saying, Monai, around the grandchildren, to be able to invest that energy and time that you maybe didn't have as parents and to let that fly. And the only thing I would add to that is um, 
You know, there's many, many traditions that say we humans, each one of us, all seven and a half billion of us, every one of us came for some purpose. And, and it's not something, mine isn't the same as yours, and that's one of the joys of being human. But to find at this stage of our lives full expression of that sense of destiny, of what, you know, the why I'm here, and then to be able to actually manifest it in form, to, within relationship, in co-creative uh, projects, uh, whatever, whatever emerges for us, and it might be that along this line of freedom, you know, uh, Mary Catherine talks about, you know, take a gap year. And you know, for people that have worked and been so caught in the, 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 the thing of doing and of being, this, the notion of having a time, an expanded time to be and to listen is radical. You know, and I, I watch people uh, go, oh, I don't know if I could do that. I mean, even people that come, we do a six day vision quest here on the land in Northern California. And people say, I don't know what I'm gonna do for six days. What am I gonna do for six days? But the, that space and the time and the reconnection to the earth spirits and the earth wisdom, um, helps us to helps us to see that we are free that we you know that we can be in a new space of freedom at this age when so much of what's in the mainstream is how sick we are how many meds we need to take how much alzheimer's you know 60 80 percent of the people over 80 are going to be you know they'll lose their minds and you know there's what I love about Integral, as much as I love so many other things that are in the world, is they look at the whole system. They, they're looking at a wholeness. And that's, that's really the essence of all the indigenous systems that I've studied over these years. Their, their, their concern is wholeness, and they start there, that we are sacred human beings. We are whole. We are whole cloth. And... I wasn't told that as a kid, you know, my church, my family, you're broken, you're sinful, that, you know, all of those messages that go deeply into the spirit. That's why we wanted to end on my freedom as a place. We, we told people this online experience you're going to have doesn't end with 12. You know, you don't get the certificate at the end. You know, you're now, you're now an elder. This is, you got it. You know, it's, it's, um, it's the beginning of a journey. And so that East energy of freedom is a wonderful fuel for what, you know, what might come. So I've spoken again. Oh. <laughs> and we, uh, we've been just, talking a lot. I just noticed. Yeah. Been talking. Let me add some information. We had it in the season before in Conscious Aging at the Wisdom Factory. We had Bettina Wiches who was talking about integral dementia. And that was, as you said, it's seeing from the whole. And she is, as far as I remember, really doubting that this is an illness only on the upper right quadrant, but that there's much more to, to indicate. So who is interested in this topic, go back and, and find it on the wisdomfactory.net. Uh, I was talking today uh, when we prepared this salon in October about freedom. And um, when you are asked the question, what is the capital of France? Paris. But when you are asked, what is freedom? Then you, you don't really know what to say. And this will be one of the exercises we're going to do. So in, in smaller groups, uh, what is freedom? And you said and um, let the spirit soar so yeah this is freedom <laughs> um, 
And uh, Heidi, I would really recommend to you read the Listening Society. It's just uh, the freedom. He, he talks about freedom, or maybe it's the not the, the second book. I don't know, but it's he talks about freedom. What kind of freedom? Re really, freedom is, and not free from something, but free for something. And yeah, so I'm quite excited that after adhering to Wilbur for such a long time, we are now trying to upgrade Wilbur somehow. Uh, and yeah, we'll see how, m <laughs> we are going to test our uh, evening on my husband because if he understands, then everything is fine because he doesn't know anything about integral or uh, metamodern. But, uh, and again, I'm a translator and the interpreter, so, trying to find the language that people can understand you. It's very important to me. Mm. I have spoken. <laughs> oh. So um, what, what do you see, Monia, that's the very best of, of this sense of being able to cross the bridges, of, of, to speak across divides, to speak across backgrounds, to speak across you know, cultures, do, do you have experience where that's really sung and happened for you, where you really sensed that I'm, the language I'm using is really landing in, you know, with the people that are in this gathering, whatever. I'm just, I'm just curious about that. Yeah, thing. well, we have a peer group as well of uh, integrally informed people, just six of us. And uh, we were trying to find uh, a language how to deal with red in spiral dynamics, which is very dynamic, but also uh, on power and trying to subdue everybody else. And I find spiral dynamics quite helpful in this respect to uh, find out who is talking to you from what level or stage, as they, as they call it. So this is, and uh, she wrote to me about uh, her little boy who is now 10, I think. And he was uh, accosted in front of the school by the father of another child. And so she didn't know what at first, and she said, I'll never go back to school. And then they went to the police and there they were told, yeah, they, she should report it. And uh, this is important for the child to learn that there is law and order in Austria, and that it's not just his family behind him, but also society. And uh, so quite simple, actually, you have, uh, you can't talk on an empathic green level to a red person, that's, uh, that won't get you anywhere. Mm. So this is what I just <laughs> learned today. So it's really, fitting in here. And I find that the we space enables you to let intuition arise, to channel things you never thought about it just by being open and listening. And this is very nourishing for me. And as always, I keep repeating myself, but I'm very grateful to Heidi to provide us with this possibility. I have spoken. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I like that. But it's a good. It's a good thing. Yes, I, I echo the gratitude to Heidi for 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 bringing us together, and uh, and the way that you're continuing that path. It's um, and um, may you know may it uh, continue to flower. This these conversations, may they grow in each of us and, and, you know, and the ones that come across them and go, oh, <laughs> oh, <laughs> and then something changes and something moves. And there's, there's a sense of, um, I once heard an elder, an Alouette, um, you know, up in the Eskimo populations um, of islands off Alaska, I once heard him tell the story of his growing up 
that no this this culture has been on the this one island for ten thousand years, sort of recorded ten thousand years, the same people living in the same place. And he said, when I was growing up, no one ever ever told me what to do. Ever, they would ask me questions. They would ask, and I find that's for me when when I know that I'm in the company of the red spiral you know i first of all have to get softer not harder and and i have to really listen for what's the question what's what question can i ask that doesn't feel patronizing or judgmental or you know less than or any of those things but comes out of wanting to really connect Thank you. Thank you for, thank you both. Oh. Yeah, thank you for, for the appreciation. And uh, it, it um, shows me that our initial idea of bringing people together is sort of slowly working out, you know. There are sometimes that by inviting people together that they found a, a, even a place to work together, which is not your case because you already are working together. But in, in other cases, it was that. And that was one of our initial ideas, you know, to have that as a platform where people can, can learn about each other and meet. And I'm very grateful. And then I wanted to say for about 20 minutes on my uh, screensaver, Mark was present, so <laughs> I like it. Really on the side, he looked into the screen, so. <laughs> yeah, and thank you that you came, and um, yeah, I'm grateful for that very much. I have spoken. <laughs> oh. Mm -hmm. oh. Is there anything uh, last that any one of us wants to say, or do are we moving towards being complete with this for now? Anything else? I think Anne, some final. Well, I've really enjoyed. I've just, I've just really enjoyed it, and um, I don't get as much opportunity for integral conversations as I do for Earth Wisdom conversations. So that's been very refreshing today, and. It just shows me again the wholeness of these approaches, you know, that you can play with all of them. And I appreciate seeing your faces on my screen. And the and I I feel Mark's legacy. I always do when I'm I'm here and how much fun he was and how he saw this conscious aging as important. So we're sitting here in his living legacy. I have spoken. Oh. 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 Thank you very much. And I hope we can continue on our way as we do and that we will be able to reach some of the goals which are inspiring others, helping others, it seems to me. And ourselves too, logically, but... <laughs> and that we spread consciousness in one way or other in the world. Spread or help it grow or whatever you want to say. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Some final words still, Monia? It seems to me as if you wanted to say something. No, 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 no. I'm very saturated. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so thank you very much. And take the course with Anne and Firehawk. People. We'll start. We'll start again, probably in the early part of 2020. Huh, so okay. So this cycle will last until November, end of November, and then, and we'll. But we'll figure out those dates soon, so that they'll be um, on the. Wonderful. And we'll change the front end of our web thing to reflect that. So. Yeah. Can you uh, say? Is there a shortcut for your the web page or? Um. Yeah, I, let me just check and make sure that it works. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, can you say that? Just while we're waiting, um, 
in November we move into Kiva dreaming time. So we uh, we tend to go into a quieter time of activity and respect that season of the, the winter time. Yeah, that's the time of of going inside even more. Anyway, I, anyway, I don't, I don't have the short. The short version is not with us, but I'll, I'll make sure that I send you the, the stuff. Okay. And wonderful. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So, thank you very much, and see you soon. We can yes. continue. Thank you. <laughs> bye bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye.